Hi, this is Tamara from Mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the leaf wiggle trivet, which is a free pattern you'll find on Mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description where you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern, all the supplies you need, and any other tutorials that I might reference here today. To make this pattern, you will need 75 yards of Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie in whatever colors you like. You can see here I've got a sort of wintry white and red one, as well as a fall colored one. So you can just use small amounts of your favorite cotton yarn. You'll also need a USI hook, which is 5.5 millimeters. The finished trivet, as you can see here in relation to my hand, is about 9.5 inches wide and about 10 inches long. Now this pattern is made in two sections. Here you can see my two finished trivets, and if I turn them over, you can see what they look like from the back. The first section we make is this mesh. Here I've made both of the meshes in red. Then, after that mesh is made, we go back and we add these wiggles. You can see a little bit easier here with the white one. And these are actually worked as post stitches around the double crochet stitches that make up our mesh. So if I turn that over again, you can see here we're just working post stitches right up and down those posts back and forth, and that creates this great wiggle shape on the front. These make great trivets or hot pads, whatever you call them where you're from, to help protect your table from hot dishes. They're also great decorations. So if you're making these for decorative purposes, of course you can use whatever yarn you like, small am amounts of your favorite colors, but if you are making this as a trivet or hot pad to protect your table, you'll want to make sure to use 100% cotton or wool yarn so that your project itself doesn't melt. So let's begin the mesh for the leaf wiggle trivet. We're going to start in row one by making the stem, which I can show you right here on our finished one. We're basically going to be making this stem and our first row of mesh. So to begin, I've got a slip knot here on my hook. There we go. And then I am going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and eight. Then I am going to slip stitch in the chain closest to the hook. So a lot of times when you're working into a chain, you might slip, or excuse me, you might skip one or two of those chains for a turning chain. For this pattern, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and start slip stitching right in that very first chain. To make that a little easier and to make your finished project look a little better, I recommend that you work into the back hump of the chain for this round rather than into, under those top two loops like you might normally do. Okay, so we're going to slip stitch into that chain closest to the hook. Just take your time and get under that loop there. And you can pull that loop through and pull that loop through again to finish the slip stitch. And don't worry about making these too tight or too small because we won't be coming back to work into these stitches. Then we're going to slip stitch in the next three chains. So again, we're just going to continue working our way up those back humps for three more slip stitches. So there's one and two and three, there we are. Then we are going to skip the next chain and slip stitch in the next two chains. So we skip that one right there, just ignore it and go to the next one and slip stitch in the next one there and in the one after that, like so. So at this point, you should have just one chain left there, the one closest to the slip knot. And we're going to work a whole series of stitches into this chain. So as we do that, we might end up working sort of around the chain a little bit in a curve. You can see right there, we've made our little stem. It's got a little kink in it now to make it look a little bit more stem-like, I guess. And so now we're going to be working that first round or wrap there, that first row of mesh, but we're all going to be working it all into that last chain right there. So let me get my yarn organized on my fingers here again, and let's begin. Okay, so working into that last chain, we start with a slip stitch, like so, and then we chain four. And when we chain four in this pattern to begin a row of mesh, which is what we're doing right here, we're going to count that as a double crochet and a chain one. So those first three chains will count as the double crochet, and the chain after that will be your chain one. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put a stitch marker right in the top of that third chain. So that will mark out the top of your double crochet when you come back in the other direction. So we'll get our loop back on our hook there, and then we can continue. We're going to work a double crochet and chain one three times, all again right into that last chain. 
So this is where you might end up working over that chain a little bit and creating sort of an arc. So again, we just go right into that chain for a double crochet and then chain one. So that's our first one. Then we double crochet and chain one again and then once more. So at this point, as you're working around that chain, if you need to sort of tuck that first end out of the way and crochet over it a little bit, whatever looks good to you is totally fine. So we've got our chain four and then double crochet and chain one three times. And then we finish it up with just another double crochet to cap it off here, all again, right back into that chain. And at this point, you can see I'm actually going under those top two loops, which is totally fine. We've made sort of a little mushroom shape here. If I hold it up, you can see we've got our stem down here, and then we've got five double crochets, all with chain ones in between. And if you're following along with the written pattern, there are photos for each stage here of the mesh. Okay, so to begin row two of the mesh, we're again going to start with a chain four that will count as our double crochet and chain one. So I'll use my other stitch marker here to mark the top of this chain three. There we go. For the next row, just to make that next row a little bit easier. Then of course, with our chains made, we can turn and we are going to double crochet in that very first stitch. So you can kind of pull that stitch marker there out of the way. So the top of that double crochet, that's our first stitch. So we wanna put our double crochet right in there like so. Then we are going to chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet all the way across until we get right to that end. So you can see I've got my chain one there, so I'll find the next double crochet and work a double crochet right in there. And then I chain one, find the next double crochet, work a double crochet in there. There we are, chain one again, Find the next double crochet and work a double crochet in there. Like so, and then chain one and find that last one, which we marked with our stitch marker. It's actually that chain three. We wanna treat it just like a double crochet and go right in there. Now, if we return to our instructions for round, or excuse me, row two, we're not quite done yet. Now we chain one and then double crochet again in that last double crochet. So if you'll remember at the beginning of this row, we had double crochet, chain one, double crochet, worked into that first stitch there. So we've repeated that again on the end. So at the end of row two, you should have a total of seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so if you ever get lost on this pattern, you can always look at the rows of mesh here. You can see we've got one row of mesh, two rows of mesh. So now we're ready to begin row three. We're going to start again with a chain four and those first three chains will count as our first double crochet. You can see here, we really want to have basically a double crochet mesh to work our post stitches around to create those wiggles. There we go. All right, so now I can turn and come back here. So we're going to double crochet again in the first stitch, sort of just like we did in the previous row like so, and then we chain one, and then we're going to double crochet and chain one and double crochet in the next stitch. So sort of another increase here in this one. So there's our double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we're going to begin our repeat, which is chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet, all the way across until two double crochets remain. So that means for this row, it'll just be in these next three stitches. And then when we get to those last two, we need to take some special actions, basically mirroring what we did up here. So to continue across, we're going to chain one, double crochet in that next double crochet. And then do it again, chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain one again double crochet in the next double crochet, like so. And now if I pull up a little bit more yarn here out of my skein, we can see if I hold it up, we've come, there are just those two double crochets left right there. Remember we're ignoring all those chain one spaces, those stay open. Okay, so we've worked our repeat until there are those two double crochets left. So what we're going to do now is chain one and double crochet and chain one and double crochet in that next stitch. 
So we double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Right there in the second to last, and then we do the same thing in the last one. Chain one, double crochet in that last stitch. You can really use your stitch marker here to help you find that chain. And then chain one and double crochet again. There we go. Dropped my project for a sec. There we are. So at the end of row three, you should have a total of 11 double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And that's what it should look like at the end of row three of your mesh. Okay, so row four is exactly the same as row three. We start again with our chain four, which is a double crochet and chain one. Then we work it basically exactly the same as row three. We have a double crochet right in that first stitch. Then we chain one and we have a double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the second stitch. Then we chain one and double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all the way across till you get to those last two. And then we've got a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, then a chain one and a double crochet, chain one, double crochet in that last one. So I will go ahead and make row four as you do. And at the end of row four, you should have a total of 15 double crochets. Okay, so here we are at the end of row four. Again, we've got our double crochet mesh with two double crochets in that first and the first two stitches and the last two stitches of the row, and then just a double crochet in each um, of the other double crochets in between. So with that, we're ready to start row five where we're going to bring in for our first set of leaves. We've kind of got the width of our first set of leaves here, or our first points on our leaf rather, I should say. So now we wanna come in a little bit to start that second set. If I pick up the finished one right here, you can see we've basically made this set right here, and now we wanna come back in to begin the second set. Okay, so for row five, we wanna bring it in a little bit to start creating that leaf shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn and loosely slip stitch in the first seven double crochets and chains. And we want to slip stitch loosely because we are going to come back and work into at least some of those slip stitches. So to do that, what I'm going to do, is you can see, I've got a good sized loop here on my hook, the active loop, if you will. That's what I always call this, the loop that you're working with at any given time, the one that's on your hook. We want to make sure that that's a little bit looser. Don't pull this down super tight. Keep it up and high and nice and loose like you might for a stitch. Then we're going to go ahead and go under those top two loops of the first double crochet. And we want to keep the tension really loose here. Again, we don't want to be pulling on our working yarn. Go ahead and yarn over and pull that through. Go ahead and then pull that loop up high again like the other loop before you pull it on through. And again, if you can avoid tugging on your working yarn and tightening that up, all the better. This will create a nice loose slip stitch that we'll be able to work back into later. So now we need to do that six more times, but we're going to be working into the chains as well as the stitches for this one. So we come right to that chain and we wanna do it again. Work another loose slip stitch. So just pull that through really gently. And there's our second one. Then we come to a double crochet. There's our third. Then we come to a chain. So there's our fourth. Then we've got a double crochet for our fifth. Just make sure you take your time, keep those nice and loose. Another slip stitch into the sixth here. This would be the chain. This would be our sixth slip stitch. And finally, our seventh lands us back in a double crochet, like so. There we are. So now we've worked in a little bit so we can get that leaf shape going. So now what we need to do is chain four, which is again going to count as our first double crochet and chain one. So I will go ahead and pull up some more yarn here from my skein and put my stitch marker in the top of that third chain. There we go, like so. And then we can continue on across for row five by working a double crochet in the same stitch as the last slip stitch. So that's the one we slip stitched into. You can see our chains coming right out of it. We want to just go ahead and put a double crochet right in the top of that double crochet. Like so. As you can see, we're off on our mesh again. After that, we are going to chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet all the way across until four double crochets remain. So those last four double crochets right there, we don't wanna work into those yet. We just wanna work our way across to there. So again, it's just chain one and then double crochet in the top of next double crochet until you've got four stitches left. Okay, as you can see here, I've chained one and double crocheted in each of those stitches across until we've got four double crochets left. 
So to finish up row five, we chain one again. I always have to have that chain one in between our double crochets. And then we double crochet, chain one, and double crochet in that very next double crochet. And those last three will remain unworked. We, luckily, we don't have to slip stitch in those. We can just ignore them for now. So we've got our double crochet, chain one, double crochet, like so. And that will finish up our row five. And at the end here of row five, you should have a total of 11 double crochets again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so row six is actually going to be a repeat of row two, where we start again with our chain four, which counts as a double crochet in chain one, double crochet in the first stitch, and then we just chain one and double crochet in each stitch across, right until we get to that very last one, where we've of course got a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So I will see you at the end of row six, where we should have 13 double crochets made. Okay, so this is what it should look like at the end of row six with 13 double crochets made in that row. You can see we've got our sort of V stitches here at each end, but just a double crochet in each stitch across otherwise. Row seven is going to be similar to our previous rows, of course, with a chain four that starts as a double crochet and chain one, but we're actually not increasing at all in this row. Let me pull up some more yarn here. But after we've got our chain four made here, and I get my stitch marker in the top of that chain three, looks like I've only actually chained three so far, needed some more yarn. So I'll go ahead and put the stitch marker in there and then chain one more. There we are, like so. Then we are simply going to double crochet in each stitch across, in each double crochet, and then chain one until we get to that end, landing with a double crochet in that one. So no V stitches, no increases for this one. We still want to have 13 double crochets at the end of row seven. So you can see here I've got my chain four, but rather than working back in that first stitch, I'm just going to jump on over to the next double crochet, like so, and then just chain one and double crochet in each double crochet across. So here we are at the end of row seven, and you can see we just worked evenly. So we have got another 13 double crochets with a chain one, of course, in between each one. So with that, we're ready for row eight, which is going to be a lot like row five, which is where we turn and start slip stitching in those first seven double crochets and chains. So again, you just wanna make sure to pull up those loops and slip stitch loosely into each one of those double crochets and chains until you've got a total of seven slip stitches made. Now, I didn't talk about this before, but I do like to go ahead and put a stitch marker in that first slip stitch. It likes to disappear when it comes time to work back into it for the edging, so this makes this stitch a little bit easier to find too. After that, we continue as before with a chain of four that will count as our first double crochet and chain one. So again, I'll put my stitch marker in the top of that third chain right there, like so. And then we can continue with a double crochet in the next double crochet. So again, this is one where we aren't necessarily going to be increasing. However, we want to make sure not to work all the way across so we can get that inset leaf shape again. So right now what we're going to do is go ahead and double crochet in the next double crochet. There we are. And then if we are following our written instructions, we begin our repeat that is chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet five times. So we'll chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet five times. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five. So that means we're going to have these three double crochets right there at the end completely unworked. We'll leave those unworked at the end just like we did before when we worked one of these slip stitch rows. So here we are at the end of row eight, and you should have a total of seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as I said, those last three double crochets are just gonna be left there unworked. So with that, we're ready to begin row nine. And these last few rows are a little different from the other rows we've done before, because we need to start decreasing to create the top of our leaf. So now we're just going to chain three. And this time that chain three will count as our double crochet, but it's not a chain four. So we are going to break our rule that we had for the rest of this pattern about making sure we have chains in between our stitches. Here's where it gets a little bit different. So we've got our chain three, then we double crochet in the next double crochet right away without a chain in between. There we go. Then we chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet four times. So chain one, double crochet in the next, there's one chain one, 
Let's find it there. Double crochet in the next. So there's two. Chain one again. Double crochet in the next. So that's three. Chain one. Double crochet in the next. And that's four. Then to finish our row, we simply double crochet in the last double crochet. And again, this is without a chain one in between. So just hop right over to that marked stitch there, our marked chain. And with that, we have finished row nine. And again, we have seven double crochets, but it's starting to come in a little bit because we don't have the chain ones in between those first and last ones. Okay, so to begin row 10, we're again going to start with a chain three rather than a chain four. But I still like to put my stitch marker in there since working into chains is just a little bit fiddlier. There we go. And then we continue by skipping the next double crochet and double crocheting in the stitch after that. So we've got this one right there. We're going to skip that one and then we're going to come over to the next one right there and put our double crochet right in that stitch right there. Then we are going to chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet twice. So chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet. There's one. And then for twice, we chain one and double crochet in the next. And now we've repeated that twice. Then to finish it off, we simply double crochet in the last double crochet. So that means we're going to skip that one there and jump over here to our marked chain three. That will be the last double crochet of that row. So let's see here. Try that again. I didn't want to, it didn't want to grab both loops for me. There we go. Get in there and you can make your last double crochet. So at the end of row 10, you should have a total of five double crochets made just like so. Okay. So row 11 again begins with a chain three. So we've got our three chains there and we'll go ahead and put our stitch marker in the top under those two loops. There we go. And then, of course, we've got to turn and come back. We've only got those few stitches to work into now. So now we're going to double crochet in the next chain. So this is a little different. We've got a double crochet here and a double crochet here. Remember, there was no chain in between. This right here is our first chain. So we're going to jump all the way over to there and work our double crochet right in that chain. Like so. There we go. Then we chain one. Then we double crochet in the next chain, which is this one right here on the other side of that double crochet. There we go. Get that all the way through. There we go. And then we double crochet in the last double crochet. So we skip that next one and double crochet in that last one, sort of mirroring what we did there at the beginning of this row. So at the end of row 11, finish up that stitch there, you should only have four double crochets left. Row 12 is our last row of the mesh before we make our edging. So this one gets a little funky and different too. We're basically going to turn these four stitches into one stitch. So we're going to start with a chain two. There we go. And then of course we got a turn and we're going to make a double crochet two together working into that only chain one right there in the middle and the last stitch. So to do that, we yarn over, find that one chain that we made in the previous row and go in there and start a double crochet. So we pull up our loop and yarn over and pull through two and we stop with two loops left on the hook. Then we yarn over again, come to that last stitch all the way over here, marked with our stitch marker. There we go and start a double crochet again. Now we've got three loops left on our hook. So to finish off, we yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So now you can see we've really made just one stitch. We've got one little V stitch right on top there, our little V, and we have finished off with a nice point for row 12. So this is what it should look like before you've added any of the mesh edging. You can see I left my stitch markers here in the ends of these rows, which will just make them a little bit easier to find when I come back and round for this first round of our edging. So to begin our first round of edging, I'm going to go ahead and turn and now I'm going to chain one and then I want to work a single crochet right in the top of that one stitch we made in row 12. So I just come right back into the top of that stitch and make a single crochet. And I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in this single crochet 
just to help me find it as we come back around the whole, we're gonna work our whole, whole way around this uh, leaf right now. And we're actually going to do it in two rounds. So the first round here of the edging, we've got our first single crochet made. And then what we want to do is continuing to work around the outside of the leaf, we chain two and then single crochet in the top of the next row four times. So let's go ahead and do that together. We're going to chain two, like so. And then we want to find the top of the next row. That's basically where you can see this row was worked into that row. That right there gives us a really great space. We can just go ahead and drop a single crochet right in there. So there's one. Then we chain two again. One, two. Find the top there of that next row. Again, just a really great easy place to stick our hook. So we make another single crochet there. And that would be two of them. So then we chain two again jump on down here. Sometimes you have to kind of give it a little wiggle, find that space where your hook wants to fit right in. There's the third one. So then we chain two again and find the top of that next row and put a single crochet right in there. So that is our uh, chain two and single crochet in the top of the next row four times. So continuing with our instructions, we chain two and then we're going to single crochet in the next slip stitch. So if we come down here and look, you can see this would be the top of our, um, that next row where they meet, but there's those slip stitches we made. So this is where we want to go ahead and single crochet in the first one of those slip stitches right there. Just go ahead and work right under those two loops as best you can. This is why we worked those stitches loosely to make it a little easier to get into. Then we're gonna chain two, at one, two, skip the next two slip stitches and work a single crochet in the next slip stitch. So we've got one, two, and there's the next one. So we single crochet right in there. And then we chain two again and skip the next two slip stitches. And then we're going to work into this last one. And this is why I went ahead and put a stitch marker in there. It just makes it that much easier to find and make sure we're in the right spot. So in this last slip stitch here, we want to work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. So this is gonna help us round that corner so we can continue working around our leaf. So we work a single crochet right there, and then chain two, and then single crochet right back in that stitch. But for this portion, I want to take this um, stitch marker and I'm actually going to put it right around that chain two. So I need to make sure to go right back in that same slip stitch for our second single crochet. Lots of stitches going on there, so you gotta wiggle your hook through if needed. And then we can continue down this side. We're going to chain two and single crochet in the top of the next row now three times, basically, whatever gets us down to that next leaf section. So we've got my chain two there, find the top of that next row, and put a single crochet in there. Chain two again, find the top of that next row. Sort of pull it apart again if you need to, to see where those two met up so you can get your single crochet right in there and chain two again. And right here, you can see where this row met right there. We don't have slip stitches this time, so we can go right into that stitch right there with our single crochet. Then we need to do the same thing across here. We're gonna chain two. And this time again, since we don't have slip stitches, we can skip this uh, chain one and this double crochet and work into this chain one and then we chain two again. And then we can skip this double crochet and this chain one, and we're right back here at sort of a leaf corner. So when this final stitch right here, where our stitch marker is, we want to again, work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So I've got my first single crochet, then I chain two. I'm gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker, and I'll just go ahead and put it right around that chain two right now, so that it's easier to find for our mesh row two and then I can go right back into that same stitch for another single crochet. There we go. And now I need to work my way down to the stem. So kind of the same thing we've been doing. We chain two, skip down here to the start of that next row, put a single crochet in the side there, chain two again, come down to where the next two rows meet, chain two again, Jump down to the next one, put a single crochet in there. Oops, I didn't quite put that in the right spot. Let me pull that out. You can see I only grabbed one loop there. I wanna make sure to go into that stitch so I can get that nicely anchored. There we go. 
and then we chain two again. You can see now we have reached down here where the stem is. And there is that chain at the top of our stem. If I turn it around here, it might be easier to see. That's that last chain that we worked that first row of mesh into. So we need to work into that chain just a couple more times here. So you can see right there, that's the chain at the bottom of this row here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a single crochet right here on the side of the stem. And then I'm just going to move the stem out of my way to the other side and put another single crochet in that same chain. But now I wanna put it on the other side of that stem. So you can see the first one there was on that side of the stem. If I move it to the side, now I can single crochet on the other side of that stem. So if I give it a little tug there, you can see we've now got single crochets right on either side of that stem. And now we're ready to work up the other side of the leaf. Okay, so to continue up the other side, it's basically the same thing. We're just coming in from the opposite direction. We chain two and single crochet at the top of the next row three times. So there's my chain two. Jump up here. You can see we're coming up the other side, but it's the same thing. Find that nice big space to put your hook and put a single crochet in there and then chain two again and jump to the next one and put a single crochet in there. Chain two again, jump to the next one, put a single crochet in there. And you can see this is going to bring us back up to one of those slip stitch corners. So we are going to chain two and then in that marked slip stitch, the one there at the end, we wanna work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So get that first one in there, chain two, move that stitch marker right on up around that chain two. There we go. And then put a single crochet right back in that same slip stitch right there on the end. There we go. So now we've got a few slip stitches to work across. So we're going to chain two, skip two, one, two, single crochet in the next slip stitch. And again, if these ended up a little too tight, you can kind of fudge it, get it under just one loop or into the stitch underneath if need be, whatever works. There we go. Then we chain two again. And now we can skip those two and work a single crochet in that very last slip stitch, which is basically at the base of that next row. There we go. And now we're ready to work up this section of our leaf. So we chain two skip to the top of the next row, work our single crochet in there, chain two, skip to the top of the next row, get our single crochet in the side there. There we are, chain two again. And now we're back up at one of those points, one of those marked stitches here on the side. So in that chain, which can be a little fiddly, take your time with it, make sure you're getting under the right parts of the chain here. There we go. We're going to work our single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So I'll just go ahead and move that stitch marker up again, like so. Oop, that didn't quite go all the way around. I ended up splitting a uh, stitch there, which I didn't wanna do. There we go. All right, and then I will single crochet right back in that same chain, the top of our chain three there. There we go. And then I will chain two and I can skip that next chain one and double crochet and single crochet in that next chain. Then chain two again, then skip that double crochet and chain one. And then I wanna work a single crochet right in the top of that stitch there. It's at the base of our next row. There we go. So now we can start working our way up this final section. You can see right there is that very first single crochet we made when we started our edging. So we're in the home stretch now. We chain two, skip to the top of the next row there, the next stitch, chain two again, jump to the top of the next row, work a single crochet in there, chain two, jump up to the top of the next one here, chain two again, and we're in the top of our next row. And then I believe, let me look a little closer here, yep, we are at our final row. So after we've chained two, you can see here, now we're back up at the top of row 12 of our mesh. So we're just going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet we made. And that's how to make the mesh edging round one. Now the mesh edging round 
two is a lot simpler. We're just going to be working a single crochet in each single crochet and two single crochets in each chain two space. So let's go ahead and do some of that together. We're not going to turn too. I need to point that out. We're working from the same uh, side here. We want to make sure that we're still working on the side with those two single crochets on either side of our stem and that our initial starting uh, end here, our tail end, is in the back. So let's go ahead and begin our mesh round two. I'm going to start with a chain one and a single crochet right back in that very first single crochet. So after I do that, I will go ahead and move that stitch marker up again into the top of this new stitch. There we go. And then to continue around, I'm just going to work two single crochets right in that chain two space. You don't have to worry about going into those particular chains unless you really wanted to. You can just work right into that chain two space. So then when we come to a single crochet, we work a single crochet in there. Another chain two space, we get two single crochets right in that chain two space. And that will take us all the way down until we get to that stem, which we need to handle just a little bit differently, of course. So I will see you when we get to the stem. Okay, so I've got the first half of my mesh edging round two done here. And you can see here, even at those points, you just work two single crochets right in that chain two space and then single crochet in the next single crochet all the way across here until we get down to that stem. Now that said, this laid really flat for me, but if you find that your points want to curl up a little bit, you can absolutely put an extra single crochet in there. Take one out if you need one where you need to. This is really just an edging round for looks, so the specific stitch count for this round really doesn't matter. It's just a matter of look, making it look good on your finished leaf. So here I am down at our leaf, uh, our stem rather, I should say, and we've got those two single crochets worked on either side of the stem. Not a big deal. It just means we've got another single crochet to work into. So we single crochet in that first one, and then the second one, and then it's right back to our repeat with two single crochets in each chain and a single crochet in each single crochet. Just because of that extra stitch there at the stem, of course, it broke up the written instructions, but really when you're making it, just single crochet in each single crochet and two single crochets in each chain two space until you get all the way around. And then of course you can join and finish off and then we're ready to add our wiggles. Okay, so this is what our finished mesh should look like. We've got our edging on there and it's right side up. You can tell that because we've worked on this side of our stem. It's sticking out here from underneath. So now it is time to add our wiggles and we're going to add these to each row of mesh in the same order, starting with row one, all the way up to row 12. But we're going to work these only around those double crochets, not around any of these edging stitches. So one of the reasons I started this pattern with a chain four for each row or chain three once we got up here was because it's easy to spot that chain three versus the other double crochets. And that tells you that that's the beginning of the double crochets for that next row. Just makes it a little bit easier to find. Now the way we make these wiggles, if you will, is by creating post stitches, basically working a series of post stitches around each one of the posts of these double crochets. So if you haven't worked post stitches before, you may want to review that before you start this section. There's a couple tricks to doing this really well. What we want to do is we want to start at the bottom of that first chain three in row one. Then we're going to work three post stitches up that post, working our way up that post. And then we're going to pivot and work three post stitches down the post of the next double crochet. Then up the next, down the next, and up the final one right there. So let's go ahead and start doing that together. One trick is rather than joining with a slip stitch and then having to chain or something like that, we're going to join with a double crochet, but we're going to be doing it post stitch style. Now, again, we wanna start at the bottom of that very first chain three in row one. So I'm actually going to turn my work so that if I pull up that chain three right there, it's sort of facing me as if it was the row I was working into. So I'm gonna put that right back down here for a second, but keep my eye on that. And then I'm going to basically create a uh, standing double crochet, but I'm going to work it as a post stitch around that post. So I'm gonna take the end of my yarn and hold it here in my hook hand with my non-hook fingers and yarn over twice on my hook. And then I'm just going to go from front to back right under that post right there, right under that double crochet. Then I can yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Now I have to do that a little carefully because of course part of that is that little tail end I'm holding right there. So with that made, 
I'm going to take my stitch marker again, my handy stitch markers, and put it under those two loops, including that tail end right there. And I know that will be the top of that very first stitch. Now I'm not gonna come back and work into this at all, but it's going to hold it nice and secure so that when I weave in this end, I don't lose that end or end up having it come out of my stitch at all. So for now, I'm just going to let that sit to the side, get my hook right back on there. And now I want to make two more double crochet post stitches around that post. Now remember, this is our chain three and we're working from the bottom of it up to the top. So we just go right along it for another one. So just as a normal double crochet, it's almost like we're working into a chain space here, but officially, since we're working around the post of a stitch, they are post stitches. Just sort of work from a different angle. So there's our second one, and now we need our third. There we go. So if I pull that back around here, so you can see our leaf, we have made three post stitches, or three double crochets around that first stitch, that first chain three of row one, working from the bottom of the stitch up to the top. So now we need to come over to that next one. So we need to change angles again. So as before we we're working like this, now I'm going to flip the whole thing so I can approach this next one right here, that second double crochet of the row from the opposite side because I want to work my three double crochets down that post right there. So of course, first I need to yarn over because it is a double crochet. There we go. Fingers didn't want a thing for me. So we find that next one again right there and go right under there. Once we've got our yarn over for our double crochet, let me try that again. It can be a little fiddly to get started, but once you uh, get the hang of it and aren't trying to narrate it, it isn't so bad. So there's that post for that second double crochet and pull that up and through and just finish our double crochet like so. So now we've got one at the top. So we need another one right around that double crochet. So there's our second one. And there's our third one, which brings us back down to the bottom of that post. So if I lay that out again, you can see we went up one stitch and down the next. If you follow those Vs at the top, you can see that's the start of our wiggle. So now we need to find that next double crochet in that row right there. And we're going to work from the bottom to the top. So it's just back and forth. So we turn it again, however is easiest for you. So you can get around that double crochet and make three more working from the bottom of that post on up towards the top of it. So from the bottom of row one up towards row two. So there's three right there. And then we can turn and find that next double crochet right there for our row one. Got a yarn over of course first. And this isn't normally how I'd hold it. I'm trying to kind of keep it open so you can see where I'm going here. Normally it's all scrunched up in my hands, so honestly, probably nobody but me could see it, but we're gonna try and lay it out. So don't tr worry about trying to hold it the way I'm holding it. You should hold it however is comfortable for you. We're working down that fourth double crochet of row one of our mesh. So there's three more, we've worked down that one. So now there's one left, so you can see there if I pull it out straight here, you can see there's that last double crochet of our row one mesh. We wanna make sure to work from the bottom to the top of this one. And we also wanna make sure not to accidentally work in, into any of these edging stitches. Those are not involved in our wiggles. So we find that last double crochet, there we are. And we work our three post stitches around it. So there's one and two and three. And with that, we will have finished our first row of wiggles. So let me lay that out again here so you can really see it from the top. We've gone up the first one, down the second, up the third, down the fourth, and up the fifth. You can see it creates that really great 3D wiggle shape that will keep our pots and pans nice um, and our table nice and safe from our pots and pans. And of course, it looks really pretty and fun too. So now we need to be able to jump to our second row of mesh. So we want to come back and look at our mesh here and we know it started with that chain three. So that right there is going to be where we begin our row two of our wiggles. So I'll get my yarn back on my hook here, make sure it's turned around the right way. There we go. And so for that first one, since we're at the bottom, we wanna start at the bottom and work our way up. So again, lay it out however you need to to find that very first chain three at the beginning of the next row. 
And then once you've got it, you can work your three double crochets working right up that post. So you can see there was a little bit of a jump right there from one row to the next, but that's not a problem. That's just how this is made. So we get our third one there. There we are. And now we've started row two of our mesh. We've, we've got those first three double crochets up that first one. So then we come to the mesh, one, the next double crochet of row two and work down and then up and down and up and down and up until we get to that last one, of course, where we've worked up and then we can jump to the next row. Again, look for that chain three and just work back and forth and back and forth. Now, at the end of row four, you can see here, that's that long row before we did our slip stitching to come back in. That one, at the end of row four, you'll have to break your yarn. And then for row five, find that chain three. Where is it? There we are. The chain three at the beginning of row five and reattach there just like we did for row one, simply because of that leaf shape. We'll end up down here, so we have to break our yarn and come back up here and rejoin. But otherwise, we just work back and forth, just as I've shown you here, working our way up the leaf. And then, of course, for this one, you'll have to break it again to come in here. And then when we get to the top, we have to do another little break just because we don't have an odd number of posts to work around. The reason that we're able to jump rows is because we have an odd number. So we can start at the bottom and go up, down, up, down, up, so that we can start up, down, up, down, and end on an up again. Basically, it's just the way the math works out. So if I pull up this finished one here, where I've actually worked most of these in different colors, for sort of a fall look. You can see here in the red, I've got that first section of wiggles there. Then where I had to re-break and rejoin anyway, I went ahead and joined with the orange for that next section. And then we join over here with the yellow. And then there is one little break for that last row right there. We just don't end up in the right spot to make that one on its own, but I think it's a really fun opportunity to even add another color if you want to. Now, if you work all of those wiggles in the same color, as you can see here, you've still got those breaks, but you can get lots of different looks with this pattern. So the only thing left to do at the end is of course, weave in those ends and you can weave in the ends on your mesh just as you normally would, but then weaving in the ends on the wiggles is really just kind of a matter of personal taste. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that stitch marker out since I don't need it anymore and get this end here on my sewing needle or my yarn needle, I should say. And then I'm just going to go ahead and send that end right to the back and I might sort of hook it into that stitch a little bit and how hard you pull down on this is gonna be kind of that matter of personal taste. Do you want that first one to stick up nice and tall or do you wanna sort of pull it over a little bit and maybe sort of have it curve down into your leaf? Totally up to you, totally a matter of what you prefer and maybe just what your own tension level dictates. Then we've got the back, you can see here, all those bottom of those post stitches worked around and this lets us weave in that wiggle color nice and secure. And of course, if this is something you're going to be actually using a lot, I use these a lot in my own kitchen and on my own table, then you'll want to make sure to weave in these ends really securely because it's something that will get washed a fair bit as well. So you can see there how well that just weaves in on that end right there. And you can see how the back of it looks as well right here on our two finished ones, just to give you another look of how this pattern works um, and how those different stitches look from underneath. You should see those rows of your mesh in between, and that just lets you know you've worked into all the right spots. And that's how to crochet the leaf wiggle trivet. I hope you'll give this pattern a try, as well as Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie. It's a great all-purpose kitchen cotton. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank <music> you.